Welcome to the National Commission for the Certification of Crane Operators Mobile Crane Operator Practical Exam. If there is anything in this video you do not understand, please request clarification from the practical examiner. The NCCCO Mobile Crane Operator Practical Exam consists of the following tasks. You must complete all phases of the test in sequence. There is also a pre-test briefing, a pre-test familiarization period, and a pre-task familiarization period prior to Task 4. Before taking the exam, you will be informed of the make and model of the crane, the boom length, and the weight of the test weight. While you wait for your opportunity to test, you will be provided time to read the descriptions of the tasks you need to perform and to review the operator's manual and load charts for the crane you will be operating. The crane's LMI system, if the crane is so equipped, has been correctly programmed and will not interfere with the proper operation of the crane. The crane you will operate has been set up and leveled prior to testing. A spirit level is available if you wish to verify the crane has been leveled properly. No part of this course has been placed at a radius that exceeds the crane's rated capacity. On telescopic boom cranes, the boom length has been preset. You will not be permitted to telescope at any time. The test site coordinator is responsible for setting the test schedule for the day. Once you've completed all your tests, you must leave the test area. If you wish to retest, you will be required to re-register and pay the test fees again. The only personnel allowed in the test area are those who are actively involved in the administration of the practical exam. You are under the supervision of the practical examiner and are required to follow their instructions and signals at all times. The examiner has the authority to stop the test if you operate in an unsafe manner. Note that all hand signals used during the exam will be in accordance with OSHA's standard method hand signals. Pre-operational shift inspection. The first part of the practical exam will be an evaluation of your ability to identify elements critical to a crane's pre-operational shift inspection. The examiner will ask you to describe how you would inspect five different areas related to the machine. You will have approximately one minute per item. Pre-test familiarization period. You will be allowed 15 minutes to familiarize yourself with the crane and to examine anything on it that you feel is necessary to operate it comfortably. You are allowed to get the feel of the controls and are permitted to run the crane through its functions, except telescoping. The brakes and other devices have been set up according to the crane manufacturer's recommendations. You may not interfere with the test course, attempt to lift the test weight, or shadow the corridor or the barrels. You must finish the pre-test familiarization period with the hook under control in the start circle in preparation for task 1. The examiner will notify you when there are 10, 5, and 1 minutes remaining. If you are ready before the full 15 minutes have passed, you may indicate this to the examiner. If, at the end of the pre-test familiarization period, you feel you are not ready to take the exam, you should notify the examiner. You will have disqualified yourself from taking the exam at this time, and you will be required to sign to that effect on the candidate score sheet. If you are using a remote control, you are required to stay inside the designated area while operating the crane during the exam. At no time during the familiarization period or test should you walk or stand underneath the test weight. Walking or standing underneath the test weight is considered an unsafe act, and the examiner is required to stop the test. 
If you are operating a crane with multiple control stations, you must select which station you will operate from. You are not permitted to switch to another position during the test. If your time during any of the tasks exceeds more than twice the optimum time, the examiner may ask you to stop and move on to the next task. Task 1. Place chain in stop circle. The optimum time for this task is 1 minute and 30 seconds. At the examiner's indication to start, at which point timing will begin, raise the chain at least 10 feet off the ground to clear all obstacles and personnel. Bring the chain from its starting position in the start circle over to the stop circle and land the chain fully inside the circle. Once the chain makes contact with the ground inside the circle, do not lift the chain off the ground. Avoid contacting anything but the ground inside the stop circle. Once the chain is under control inside the circle, the examiner will give you a stop signal and timing will end. Points will be deducted for the following. Dragging or contact of the chain outside of the circle. Hook or ball touching the ground either inside or outside of the circle. Hook, ball, or chain contacting any part of the course or crane. Lifting the chain off the ground after initial contact with the ground inside the circle. Exceeding optimum time. Task 2. Follow hand signals. This task is not timed. You will be asked to correctly respond to a set of four separate OSHA standard method hand signals given by the examiner. The examiner will select four hand signals and they will be given one at a time. Task 3. Ball in Barrels For lattice boom cranes, the optimum time is four minutes. For the telescopic boom swing cab, and telescopic boom fix cab cranes, the optimum time is 3 minutes and 30 seconds. At the examiner's indication to start, at which point timing will begin, bring the ball from the start circle and place it into barrel number 1. The examiner will determine when the horizontal line marked around the center of the ball has dropped below the rim of barrel number 1 and will so indicate to you. At the examiner's indication, move the ball from barrel number 1 to barrel number 2. The examiner will determine when the horizontal line marked around the center of the ball has dropped below the rim of barrel number 2. Hold the ball in barrel number 2 until instructed by the examiner to remove it. Points will be deducted for the following. Moving barrel 2 inches or more. Knocking over barrel. Hook or ball touching the ground. Exceeding optimum time. Pre-task familiarization period. At the examiner's indication, Bring the hook over the test weight located in the test weight circle. The load will be attached by the examiner or proctor. You are allowed to bring the test weight to the designated area, where you can get the feel of the load, test the brakes, and so on, before beginning the next task. Do not swing the load outside of the designated area, or shadow the zigzag course. You will be allowed 5 minutes for this pre-task familiarization period. At the end of this period, you must have placed the test weight on the ground in the test weight circle with the rigging taut. The examiner will notify you when there is 1 minute remaining. If you are ready before the full 5 minutes have passed, you may indicate this to the examiner. Task 4 Zigzag Corridor This task is divided into two separate subtasks, 4A and 4B. 
4A requires you to negotiate the corridor in a forward direction. 4B requires you to negotiate the corridor in a reverse direction. You may not telescope during any part of this task. For lattice boom cranes and telescopic boom swing cab cranes, the optimum time is 3 minutes. For telescopic boom fixed cab cranes, the optimum time is 4 minutes. Task 4A and 4B have the same optimum times. At the examiner's indication to start, at which point timing will begin, lift the test weight and guide it through the corridor. Avoid touching or knocking over any part of the PVC barriers, touching the ground with the test weight, or raising it so high that the chain leaves the ground. Timing will end when you have placed the test weight on the ground inside the stop circle and the examiner has given you a stop signal. For this task, the chain does not need to be fully inside the circle. Points will be deducted for the following. Knocking a ball off a pole. Moving a pole base off the line. Knocking a pole over. Chain leaving the ground. Passing poles with the chain off the ground. Load touching the ground. Circumventing the course. Exceeding optimum time. Once task 4A is complete, the practical examiner will provide you an opportunity to reposition the boom tip over the test weight, but you will not be permitted to pick the test weight back up prior to the start of task 4B. For task 4B, at the examiner's indication to start, at which point timing will begin, lift the test weight from the stop circle and travel back through the corridor in a reverse direction. Remember to avoid touching or knocking over any part of the PVC barriers, touching the ground with the test weight, or raising it so high that the chain leaves the ground. Remember also that all point deductions listed in Task 4A will apply to Task 4B. Timing will end when you have placed the test weight in the test weight circle and the examiner has given you a stop signal. Again, for this task, the chain does not need to be fully inside the circle. Task 5. Safe Shutdown and Securing Procedures This task is intended to evaluate your knowledge of the proper procedures required to safely shut down and secure the crane. The examiner will ask you to describe the procedures you would apply to the crane in preparation to leave the site. After the exam, please do not ask the examiner to review your score sheet or discuss your performance, since they are not permitted to do so. Your results will be sent to you within 12 business days after receiving your score sheet. If you have completed all your tests, you must leave the test site. Otherwise, you should return to the pre-test briefing area. Thank you for participating in the NCCCO Mobile Crane Operator Certification Program.